Hello and welcome back to our Rocket Rabbit run of, of Omega Ruby Randomizer. And in this episode, after successfully uh, making it into Moss Deep City, we are just going to uh, turbo ourselves right into the Moss Deep Gym. This gym is significantly Whoa. different than it was both in um, uh, Ruby Sapphire and Emerald. In Emerald, it was actually significantly different because it actually focused on the double battle mechanic via a switch puzzle. Whereas in Ruby Sapphire, I forget what the gimmick was in Ruby Sapphire, actually. What for? I remember. Um, I'm pretty darn sure that between Ruby Sapphire and Emerald, that they actually modified the Moss Deep Gym so that it it behaved a little differently. The whole light, as am I. But I forget what the original layout for Ruby Sapphire was like. I mean, you could, if if you played if you played one Pokemon Gym, you played it all. Gauntlet of Trainers, Maze. Inside the inside the gym, that's going to slow you down and demoralize your progress throughout the gym while fighting relatively tough Pokemon trainers, leading up to an ultimate gym leader clash with the twins. <laughs> yeah, Ludicolo is a ghost type with with cute charm and glare, meaning that our meaning that Black Canary is effectively useless against it. Ludicolo is honestly one of the more interesting uh, Pokemon for Generation 3 because it wants to be a special sweeper very much, but it doesn't have the speed to do it. So it so it supplements its defensive abilities with some really it, it supplements its defensive st statistics with some really interesting abilities, either with Swift Swim to make it uh, well, uh, to make it significantly faster, or with Rain Dish to uh, make it so that while when it is set up to be a Rain Sweeper, it does it very well. Right, because while you're improving your Water type attacks by 1.5 with, um, with with the rain with the Rain Weather effect, you also get little pieces of health restored every turn due to the Rain Dish ability. Yep, it's I think it's 116. I uh. I have a tough association with Ludicolo because I will never fucking forget the Pokemon Coliseum. It was like one of the earliest like boss battles in the game. You were fighting. Yep, Mirabee. you were fighting like two. First, you're fighting, you know, two Ludicolo, and then you realize that he has two more Ludicolo in stock. So every time you take out a Ludicolo, another one takes its place. <laughs> so <laughs> yep, his team is five Ludicolo and the Shadow Sudo Ludo. Yep. And uh, that was annoying, because these Ludicolos were fucking tanks. They had lots of health, and because they were using Rain Dish, they restored health every turn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Half of them had Rain Dish, and, uh, uh, well, it was three that had Rain Dish and two had Swift And Swim. they all knew how to dance the cha-cha. Ah. Uh. Everyone actually has really fond memories of Mirror B. I I also do, but not as much as everyone else does. Yes, I jump cut past our, us going to the uh, Pokemon Center. Well, oh, I, I mean, I tell you what, at least I remembered something from that game. I also remember getting stuck in the first town forever. Really? Why? Well, um, maybe it was my... Maybe it's because I was trying to solve some kind of challenge inside the town, and I, and I got sidetracked or something. I just remember, yeah, there's a big freaking corridor that looks like something out of uh, one of the gyms from Twilight Princess. Uh, the gyms from Twilight, the dungeons from Twilight Princess, where you're going through like a canyon or something, and there's like windmills and shit. Yeah, I remember that town. There was a lot of ramshack. That's Mount Battle. That's one. It's it's one of the earlier towns. I also could be misremembering it. That, that appears to get nicer as you go up the hill, of course. Yeah, that's Mount Battle. But you didn't need to attempt to clear Mount Battle on your first on your first run, specifically because after this is you an outrage. Uh, yes, outrage. But after you clear uh, the first uh, the first Shadow Pokemon encounter there, Volt Absorb. God damn it! You don't really need to stay at Mount Battle for anything. And uh, the only thing that you get for clearing Mountain Battle in the, in the story mode is you get an additional time flute. Right, so that you can summon Celebi and automatically remove the shadow status from one of your shadow afflicted Pokemon. Yep. Psy Strike. Oh, now it kills the Tentacruel. Well, yeah, because it had Volt yep. Absorb. It doesn't have it doesn't have Psy Absorb. The Psy Absorb is not an ability, thankfully. 
Although, it would be an interesting counter to Psychic, since, since Psychic still needs some dedicated counters to it. I would think that instead of getting health for getting hit with, with a Psychic attack while you have Psychic Absorb, that instead it improves your special, either your special attack, your special defense, or both at the same time. A special attack. None of the, uh, none of the uh, absorption abilities do mo uh, do more than one uh, do more than one thing. So, All right, well, what are there any other absorption abilities? Yes, lightning rod increases your special attack. Um, I think it's storm drain that increases your special attack, and uh, what is sap sipper increases your physical attack. S sap sipper. So getting hit with bug type attacks. Nope. Grass, grass. Type attacks. Gotcha. Huh. So you get... It is the signature ability of Sawsbuck and Deerling only... hmm. and uh, go, -Go. So it's, it's actually the only thing worse than hitting your opponent with an attack that doesn't affect their Pokemon type. It act, not only is the attack nullified, but it also gives them a boost in battle. Yep. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. I don't know if I've said it on the show before, but I actually went pretty much the entire way through Generation 1 on one of my earliest attempts, not knowing that you can't hit Ghost-type Pokemon with Normal-type attacks. Oh, yeah, also, and also vice versa, that Ghost-type Pokemon cannot hit Normal-type Pokemon. I think that was the one that took me the longest to learn. Uh, what Ghost-type Pokemon were you learning? Because in Generation 1, they have a single fucking attack. The uh, Lick, of course. No, Nightshade. Night Nightshade was, was the attack that Agatha's Pokemon were using, because that one, because that attack actually levels. Okay, so what were you? So what you do there is you bring out your Tauros with Earthquake because Tauros with Earthquake just rips, well, rips through the entirety of Agatha. What you do is, um, yes, you get a Tauros that knows Earthquake specifically because they're all Poison types, so they all will die immediately, and because the physical defense stat also is terrible. In order to encourage you to use not Psychic type attacks because they're Poison, but Ghost type attacks because they're Ghost. Um, I remember getting in a stalemate for the longest time because my Pokemon was normal and it only knew normal type attacks. And I got those Pokemon was ghost and it only knew ghost type attacks. So we were just trying to hit each other over and over again, but it just kept saying it doesn't affect. But what I failed to understand was that there's a big difference between doesn't affect the other Pokemon and didn't affect the other Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, didn't affect means that your powder moves missed. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Here is someone hey, who Audino. needs a microphone. Huh. I will slap you with my microphone holding hand. Mm -hmm. Isn't the I mean, I lovely? get the earrings, but I don't see any other idle uh, idle traits. At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. Thinking how I'd never win my Pokemon battle. <laughs> a swoobat. My Pokemon battling skills are out of sync. See, he's not actually, you know, suspending the Pokeballs in midair. Somebody just took a snapshot of those Pokeballs in midair. Mm. Which reminds me of one of my most beloved lucky pictures ever taken by a buddy of mine who was at who was bowling one time but he but the subject of his picture was not actually what became one of the greatest pictures i've ever seen he just wanted to take a moment to hello hex maniac he just wanted to take a moment hey it's tauros well speak speak, Hi, of, tauros. speak of the devil and he shall appear with his silver horns that m so now tauros is south south that makes way too so much anyway sense. my buddy wanted to take a picture of his buddy john because he was being a smart ass and kind of like, do you see what's going on over here with his with sticking his thumb back behind him? And and somebody was going up taking a shot. And so he was doing this at the same time, having this heavily incredulous look on his face, pointing backwards, looking at the camera. Meanwhile, the bowler at the lane actually botched the shot and dropped the bowling ball while throwing it. But the ball was in midair when the picture snapped. <laughs> ah. Hi, uh, I remember Illumis. Like, um, Vol what, what's the what's the V what's the V counterpart? Volbeat. Volbeat. Thank you. I've never been a fan of Illumis or Volbeat. 
I, as cool dynamic as they are, they, because they're both bug types, they don't actually play off of each other that well. And again, this is Gen 3 where bug type still doesn't technically so exist. powerful. <laughs> Alright. One more trip out and then... Uh, one more trip out to heal, and then we will go take down. Take, well, then we will attempt to take out Tate and Liza. Oh I man, think. when we meet a character in this game, do we ever see all the sides? <laughs> uh I don't think so. No, because the majority of the NPCs well, in the Pokemon Center are static, and we can't get behind. There's joy. Well, I mean, it was. I mean, when you meet, I feel like a lot of times, like when you meet a. A lot of the more niche, nuanced characters tend to all behave similarly. All the guitarists generally say musical type stuff. All of the Pokemon, all the Pokemaniacs are fucking crazy and should be locked away immediately. And all the Hex Maniacs just beg the question. <laughs> well, well, originally the Hex Maniacs were actually, you know, uh, in Gen One, they were effectively rich. They were, they were, they were, they were actually mm. they. And they were possessed by the ghost Pokemon. Right. They were mediums, not not yeah. girls who cannot close down their internet media devices. Instead, you were actually actually you could have even started feeling sorry for the mediums because they were being possessed by evil spirits, which were the spirits of Pokemon who were butt hurt because they should not have died of a crit during the battle. Exactly. Specifically coughing, but coughing was terrible. Eradicate. So. Hey, Eradicate. Uh -huh. I actually like Eradicate. Uh, Him is very scrappy. I remember Eradicate had probably one of the best models in Pokemon Stadium 1. No, that's not hard. I mean, did you look at Machamp? <laughs> Just look at his face. Look at his... No, no it's not Machamp's face that, that I ever thought was all that bad, actually. The problem that Machamp has is that his... His core, ch his core and chest are so goddamn <laughs> polygonal. It's it's embarrassing. Uh. Stomp! Yay! Yay! Black Canary hit forty-three. Right, we up there. We're supposed to be forty-two on with our entire team go uh, going into uh, <clears throat> going into Tate and Liza. At least from what I remember. Oh, hey, Zatanna wants to learn Earthquake. Yeah. Um, get but here's the problem. Wild Charge is really the only move that I could uh, reasonably get rid of because Zatanna's still a special attacker. Zatanna has, like, never used Wild Charge, though. That's true. I mean, she used it in the mirror match against the Imposter, but that was it. All right, and now we have righted the Psychic Pathways in order to actually reach the Wind Sensei. Mm. All right, Virgil. Virgil. Eh. Are you gonna throw? Are you gonna throw your Yamato at us? No, he has a story to tell you, <laughs> and he will tell you in narrative poetry. Look, I get that Beatrice bo broke up with you, but I don't need seventeen fucking no, chapters that's, that's about it. Dante, it's Virgil taught Dante. I mean, Virgil wrote like two, like twelve hundred, no thirteen, no thirteen hundred years before Dante existed. Oh. It's just that the voices speak across time. Huh? He would get 333 points. That is funny. Ah, uh, come and come buskin. Uh, you giant chicken, you! Yeah, put him up. Put him up. And you're dead. And flying press. That did Ooh. not do much damage. Focus blast. Shit, focus blast. You are doomed. Not doomed, just you know, that somewhat was a pretty hurt. epic, not very effective attack. Ah, got you. Resistant to both to flying, fighting, and uh, and or and or electric. Right. So is I think he's a so I flying. think he's a rock type? Question mark? No, no he is not a rock, rock type. Doesn't, rock doesn't really respond either favorably or unfavorably to electric. He would have to be. It could it could also be because because the second type is interfering with the second type of attack you tried hitting him with. Now that and that brings um, 
No, he's yeah, he's electric. That's right, because electric resists flying. Ah, he hit the nail right on the head. Um, I, I don't know if you had uh, clarified this to me earlier on in the series. So, when a Pokemon has only one type, how many types does the randomizer assign it? One or two. Okay, and if a Pokemon has two types, how many types does it assign? One or two. It's always one or two.